Today I'm back in the laundry room putting down flooring. I'm going to show you how I did it. Stick with us. Hi and welcome to the Handyverse where we approach home ownership mindfully, turning to DIY as a first resort when we can, our knowledge and skills allow it, to improve our home, to learn and hopefully inspire you to do the same in your own living space. Today we're back down in the laundry room after a long hiatus. Uh, Suzanne's getting a little impatient, but I have some time now, so I'm back in the laundry room. Today I'm putting down some flooring, and uh, I'm going to show you how we do it. So the flooring we're going to use is a laminate flooring. Uh, you can see it here, uh, I don't know what you call it, a barn board pattern maybe. Um, this is, uh, it's called the Home Decorators Collection. We got this up at Home Depot. We're using 12 millimeter thick laminate because the underlay that we're using requires a minimum of at least eight millimeters so we want it to be nice and thick this flooring we got you can see here comes with a 35 year residential warranty uh, only five years for commercial applications so consider that if you're looking to install it 12 millimeter thick as i said uh, but it also requires an underlay uh, so your choices could be uh, plywood underlay or i'll show you what we're going to use which is a a wonder one step underlayment from DMX. And this is the underlayment we're gonna use. So it's supposed to be one step. Um, you can see right on the uh, right on the package itself, um, you need to use eight millimeter thick uh, laminate at least. Uh, we have 12, we're okay there. But you also, you don't need OSB, which is one of the reasons why I want it to install this. OSB is oriented strand board, which is a type of plywood that you commonly see as an underlayment. If you have a fairly level floor, something like this it will be sufficient instead of having to put a layer of plywood down underneath and then your, your um, laminate flooring on top of that. I've never used this before, but uh, I want to give it a go and I wanted to show you what I did and how I did it and see if it's something that might work for your application as well. It does come with a roll of tape to go with it. This is to uh, seal the seams when you're laying it down on your floor. You could also use something like tuck tape um, to seal those seams as well if, uh, if yours doesn't come with this uh, or you need more than what's here. To give you a little view of what it looks like, you can see it's dimpled flooring. Uh, this has the benefit of uh, smoothing out your floor if it's a little bit uneven, but also it allows, it keeps it up off the floor. So if you do have any moisture in your basement, uh, there's, there's space for it to go to, uh, to dry up and not get soaked up into your laminate flooring. And as always, we'll find some links to these so you can get more information on it. We'll put those in the description down below in case you need it for your own project. Next step, get the washer and dryer out of the way, put down our underlayment and, uh, Start laying some flooring on top of it. Why do I make things complicated? Why do I lose all my control? Oh, oh. I keep on letting my bed happen. The underlayment is down. Uh, it was pretty easy to work with. I only put down two strips because uh, now I put the flooring down and then I can move the washer and dryer back into position. Um, cut pretty easily. I just used a utility knife. And uh, I had to cut around this uh, wall that contains all the plumbing. But uh, again, with the utility knife, that was pretty straightforward to do. So uh, easy to work with. This went a little askew on me here. It looked like just a bend in the roll itself as it got towards the middle of the roll. Because I laid it flat, the floor was flat. But I still ended up with this little bit of space here. But uh, I just covered it up with the tape and we're gonna go ahead with it anyway. Just one note on the, on the product itself. Otherwise, uh, pretty easy to work with, pretty easy to put down. And now we're gonna switch to putting in the laminate. This wall over here is the longest wall, so I'm gonna start here. Um, one couple things to note on the laminate. You wanna have this groove out so you can click the next piece into it. Um, if you don't have a lot of space, we're going to be putting a baseboard along here. Uh, but if you need to save space on there, you can cut this groove off on the first row just to get it closer and in underneath the baseboard. You want to leave probably half an inch or so from the laminate to the wall uh, to allow for expansion. 
I don't have that problem because there's tons of room under here. But the way that we installed the uh, the, the way that we installed the uh, insulation on the wall, but I will have to keep it off the wall up there. Keep the spacing on the side, and then again also here on this side on this mini wall that has all the plumbing in it. I measured the length of the wall or from wall to wall and uh, these boards are six and a half inches wide so you'll want to do the same measure your space because what you don't want to do is end up on the other end and have to cut a little narrow piece to fill in the gap at the end. Um, when I did the calculations I should end up with a, a piece about this big at the end which is uh, nice and easy to still work with. I'm uh, going to cut it with the jigsaw. I, I don't have a laminate blade for my radial arm saw and they're cost about a hundred bucks to get one. So I know it's going to be a bit slower to use the jigsaw, but I do have laminate blades for that. So that's what I'm going to use to cut the pieces. Again, it'll take a little bit more time, but it'll also save me a hundred dollars. Now I just need to stagger, make sure I stagger the seams and start putting in the flooring. So a couple things to note, I, uh, I came around this corner, all I did was come out in here the same distance that I did on this side, and then I cut this piece here to notch around it, and, uh, and that fit in quite well and it let me line everything up. Uh, I didn't bother worry about the seams in here, but out here you can see I staggered the seams as random as I could. Um, one thing to note when you're using laminate, you can see this pattern here it shows in a couple of spots. So laminate flooring is essentially a picture that's uh, that's put onto an engineered board. And so um, it's not, not too bad if you have something that's consistent, but where this is kind of burn style, those patterns are actually noticeable. So uh, and this is gonna be underneath the, the washer, so I'm not too worried about that. But for moving forward, I'm gonna be cognizant of where those patterns end up and try and space them out as far as possible. This flooring is is uh, pretty easy to install actually. Um, there's no lip on this side so it just sets down into this groove of the neighboring piece which makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about trying to work in a tongue on both sides so you just line it up uh, here, tip it up, ensure that it's snug against this and then set it down. And if it doesn't sit right down, you just wiggle it a little bit while pushing it in. And eventually you'll feel it sit into the groove and settle into place. So you don't need to actually use a hammer and a block to, uh, to lock these together. They do just simply drop into place. Now I just need to finish the flooring here so I can move the washer and dryer back into place and then finish the other side of the room. Okay, I have the washer and dryer moved away. I've uh, got this left to do. Need to put down the underlayment. I uh, just need to move Her Royal Highness's throne um, so I can do it in there as well. You can see I went a little bit crooked with the underlayment. Um, so the floor looks crooked right now, but I've triple checked it and measured it against the fair wall and the laminate is going straight, or uh, I should say perpendicular, parallel to the wall is going parallel to the wall behind. But it might make it a little bit tricky to put the underlayment down for the rest of this here um, strip that I have to do. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change directions with the underlayment and to make it a little bit easier to work with.
There you have it, pretty straightforward. I liked both of these things. I liked the one-step underlayment. It was really easy to put down, really easy to modify just using a utility knife. Uh, the laminate flooring went down great. It feels good. Uh, it clicks together well. The only thing I might say about it was the patterns on it were quite obvious, so I had to be quite careful about how I laid them out. Uh, other than that, clicked together really easily, and uh, now I got laundry room floor done. So if you want to see where this came from, what it looked like before, and what it's going to look like when it's finished, I'm going to put a link right up here for the whole playlist for all these laundry room videos, and you can check them out, and catch you in the next one.